Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna set up this M1 that I received from Xtool. And then after I get it set up, we're gonna try it out. Now this is a diode laser. So I have a CO2 laser and I have some diode lasers. The diode lasers are less powerful. They can't do quite as many materials, but the positive thing about them is they're so much more economical. Now, what I show you today is what you would get if you ordered just the laser. It's not the extras like the air assist or the filter or anything like that. It's just what you get if you order the M1. Now, this is a five watt. You can see that by the little label at the back of this. They have more powerful ones, but this is the one that they sent to me. So I'm curious to see how well it works. Now, before we get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. And then if you do, tap that bell and then select the all notifications so that YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this film off. It's just protective film. And I have not taken stuff out of here yet, so I'm not sure exactly what all I get. All right, so there's some styrofoam in the middle and then a little thank you card. Then we have the manual. Now I've watched a few videos, so I feel like I'm fairly familiar with this machine. And then here's some sample materials. Okay, so it looks like there's a little dog tool, a piece of wood. Let's see what else. Now one thing about this laser is it's the first of its type. So not only does it use a laser, but it also has a blade function. So in addition to cutting things like wood or acrylic or engraving on tumblers, you can also use the blade feature and cut things like vinyl and heat transfer vinyl. Now on the top, this looks like faux leather. That is probably for the blade too. Before you use the laser to cut anything or engrave on anything, you need to make sure that it truly is laser safe. Otherwise, it could be toxic, it could be bad for you, and it can be bad for the machine. All right, so we have some faux leather and something orange. Not sure if that's stencil material or vinyl. Okay, this looks like a sticky mat maybe that you put down in there. Not sure, but for this video, I'm more interested in the wood. And then for a future video, I'm very interested in this little dog tag. Okay, let's see if this comes out. All right, it does, but I think it's gonna be better if I just show you by lifting things out. Okay, so this is like a corrugated, almost like a dryer vent, and you would use this to either connect it to the filter, which I don't have, or vent it out the window. And that's what I'm gonna to have to do for now. Okay, so we have a cord that's going to connect the M1 to the computer. And that's just your basic power cord. Okay, so this is a fitting that's going to go on the back so that you can then attach this. And then there's the little screws, these I've just seen people screw them in with their hand. That's going to attach this fitting to the back. And then this little spring thing that will keep this tight on that fitting. All right, let's dig around here. I can't really see over it. Okay, so this is a cord that's going to attach to the M1 and then the power cord will go there and then you plug it into the wall and let's see i really have no idea what that is i'll have to read up to find out it's called peng sheng all right anything else in there or here i don't feel anything so this is probably the blade that's what i assume 
Yeah, and as I lift it out, I can see that's what it is. Okay, so I'm getting five 45 degree blades. Awesome. All right, I haven't seen the laser head yet, so I assume that's deeper down in here. Oh, okay, the laser head is already attached. That's nice. And I see my cutting mats down in there. Okay, looks like I have to take this styrofoam out first. What I want to do is shove down on it to get it past that laser head. Okay, I can feel some more styrofoam, and then this is probably... Okay, these are the little prism risers. When you're cutting things on a laser, if you can get air circulating under whatever you're cutting through, that makes for a better cut. And so these are just some little triangular prisms that when I'm cutting something, I'll put those in the base of it, and that'll help. So then we have two cutting mats. The blue one says it's light grip, and the pink one says it is fabric grip. So let's go ahead and close the lid and flip it around so we can add the things to the back. So here's where it vents out the back, and so we have this little fitting here. And then we have those four screws. I would call these thumb screws because they don't require a screwdriver. Not sure if that's the technical word for them, but that's what I'm going to call them. So you just have to line up the holes and then just twist those to get them in. Now this piece, it feels like a, like a hard plastic piece, just in case you're interested. All right, I'm just going to tighten those up a little bit, and that was easy enough to do. Let's go ahead and add the venting hose on it. Now, I went ahead and took it out of the plastic, and I'm curious how long it goes. So let me just kind of experiment here and see. See how close I'm going to have this to my window. But you can see this is a lot like a dryer vent, or the hose that you put on a dryer vent. All right, let me take this off camera and see how long it goes. Okay, I can tell this would easily stretch to at least five feet. Not sure if it'll go longer than that. Okay, now I have a feeling, unless I want to put this silver piece all the way over this hose, all five feet that I stretched out, let me go ahead and put this on first. So you just push on those, squeeze them together. It gets larger. That way you can put it on. Okay, so it took me a minute, whoops, it took me a minute to get that on. Now I'm going to try to feed it further in so that I can clamp this around it. And it's just a little bit trying because it has to be really tight. You don't want the fumes coming out, you know, between this and the fitting. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So now I'm going to squeeze this and bring it out past the first ring all the way around. All right, let's go ahead and plug these cords up. Now the first one is to hook it to the computer. Now I use a Mac and I don't have a USB port on my computer, so I do have some little adapters, that's what I'll have to use. So the next thing that I want to hook up is this and it's called an adapter just gonna plug it in right there and then the power cord goes in this end now I believe that this is if you have the filter which I don't but they do have the port on there in case you get that too now, once I get this plugged in and hooked up to my computer and moved over by the window, this is the power switch. So you can just reach back here 
and turn that on. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and download the software. And so right up here in the search function, I'm going to put Xtool M1 software. And let's see what we have. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's go to this one. I see it says software download for the M1. That's what I have, so I'll click right there. And then Xtool Creative Space Software. That's what their software is called is Creative Space. So I'm going to click there. All right, apparently I went to the wrong place, so let me click the link they gave us. Okay, I am finally in the right place. And so let's go ahead and say, well, there's a lot of pop-ups here. Okay, let's go ahead and say download. And then I have to pick which system I want to download it on. Now I have a Mac. There's two options for that. One with Intel chips, one for an M1 or an M2 Apple chip. Now I know this is the right one for me, but here's how you can see, at least on a Mac. Click on the Apple and say, about this Mac. And then right here in the middle, notice it says chip, Apple M2. So I know I want this one right here. Okay, so you can see right now that it is downloading. And it downloads pretty quickly as you can see. So now I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And here it is right here. So I'm going to double click on it. And then on a Mac, all you do is you slide your application to your apps file. And then that's going to start the process of getting on the computer and accessible to me. So let's go ahead and close this out. And then I'm going to go to my applications file. And there it is. So let's go ahead and double click on it. Okay, it's downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes. And then now I need to read all of this. Then once I've done that, I click right here and I say agree. Okay. All right, so this is an announcement that popped up. I'm just going to say don't pop up for the next seven days. We'll get rid of that. Let's go ahead and see what they want us to see. Okay, so you can go through here. You can read some things. You can look at projects. But I'm going to go ahead and skip that. All right, it is telling me to connect the device. So let me see what happens when I say connect device. And then I have to tell if I'm going through USB, Wi Fi, IP, or Ethernet. And I'm going to do a USB. So I'm going to go ahead and get the laser moved over here, and we'll continue with this. Now, I apologize for what the video looks like. It's by my window, it's bright daylight out, and I have white room and shades. Now, I've hooked the Xtool M1 up to my computer. Now, my computer doesn't have a USB drive, so I have to use an adapter. Then I also have the vent hanging out the window. And then lastly, I plugged it into the wall. So I'm ready to go ahead and turn this on. Then we can get back to the computer and connect the device through the software. Now it came on the lights flashing. I just want to lift the lid and see what I see. So it acts like it's going through some type of startup cycle. Now I might as well go ahead and put those triangular prisms down and then I'll put the wood in there as well. Okay, now that we have it hooked up and turned on, let's go ahead and refresh this. Remember, I am hooking it up through USB drive. And there it is, so I'll click there. And you might have heard it beep, and then look. There is a camera in there, and look how bright that picture is. It can see exactly where the wood is in there. 
Now if I want to, I can go ahead and open the lid and straighten it up some. I think I'll do that. Okay, I thought I'd have to hit refresh, but look, it refreshed on its own. So let's see what we have here. Okay, today I'm gonna use the flat bed of the laser. Other options, if you're doing like a tumbler, you would do that. If you take the bottom out and you set it on top of wood or something, you'd use open plane. If you're going to cut vinyl, you'd use the blade cut. And then if you plan to print something and then cut it, so you'd be doing that with something like a printable vinyl or stickers then you would use this. But let's go ahead and stay with laser flat. And then the material, this is the three millimeter basswood plywood. Now let's see here. I raised it on the little, okay, there they are. When it asks if the height was raised, I'm going to click on this triangular prisms here. Now this does three things. It'll engrave, it will score, and it will cut. So let me hit text. All right, let me figure out how I can change what it says. Okay, so, oh, okay, I think I see it. All right, so let's go ahead and click back on it and then see right here, this must be where I can change the wording. So I'm gonna have an E for engrave and then I'd really like to have an S that is separate from it. Okay, so we're doing a new layer or whatever you wanna call that. So we're gonna have an S for score and then we're going to put a C for cut. All right, so let's move those apart. All right, let's select all three of those, move it up. I don't wanna waste a lot of material. Now, as I work through this, I will figure out the different fonts, how you can make an offset if you can, things like that. Today, I just wanted to unbox it, get it put together, get it connected to my computer, and just do a few little tests. So I'm gonna make that just a little bit larger, and then we'll drag it down. I think those can also be a lot closer to each other too. Okay, so let's start with the E. And I see over here where I can change it to engrave. So I'll do that. Now, because it knows what material I'm using, it set the power itself and it set the speed. So I'm just gonna rely on it <laughs> and see if this works out well. If it doesn't, I can always decrease the speed to make the engrave darker. I can increase the power. I just need to play around with those settings after I do this first thing. So the E is set to engrave. Let's put the S for score. I'm gonna click on score. And now we have a power of 100, speed of 50. And then let's click on the C and go right over here to cut. Okay, and then that's a power of 100. And look how slow it slowed way down so that that laser beam has time to cut all the way through this. Okay, so I don't know if I can just hit frame now and if I see it frame in here or if I have to lift the lid, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit frame. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And it framed very well. I like where the design's placed. And so I'm gonna say framing completed. All right. This is my first time and I'm a little bit nervous, but let's go ahead and hit start. Okay, so apparently this is just a preview and I have to hit start again. Now it says it's gonna take about one minute. So I'll hit start here and then I assume I have to push that button on the front of the machine again. Okay, and that's what it tells me here. And then notice here, do not leave your device unattended. It is a laser, things can happen. So stay in the room, and if you need to, pull that plug really quickly. Now it does say process again, so it looks like, let's say you are engraving something and you're not happy, maybe it wasn't dark enough. It looks like you could just leave your material in there and say process again. So let's open the lid and see what it looks like. Now one thing I'll tell you, this machine is pretty quiet. 
Okay, so far so good. Now I can tell that E has some burn marks on it. So what I could do is I could take some sandpaper and lightly sand that and that would take that off. And then the S looks good and the C, it fell right out. And look how clean that cut is. I am pretty happy with this. Even the back looks good. Okay, so the E, like I said, it has some burn marks around it. I'm going to take some sandpaper and see what happens if I sand on that. The S looks good. Now, score just means it's going to put an outline around it. So it's just going to engrave, basically, around your image. And then that C did really well. It just fell right out of there. Now I just realized I accidentally sand them on my S also, but I put some rubbing alcohol on this paper towel. And I think what had happened inside the E is the sawdust or whatever from out here fell into the E because it is engraved pretty well. It's not just surface deep. It is engraved down in there. So I didn't really think that I sanded the engraving away. But here's what it looks like once it's cleaned up. Now I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about this. I know that you can change the lines per inch and things like that to improve clarity, like your resolution on a picture. I think the default settings did excellent. Now the other thing is it ended up taking two minutes and 24 seconds. So the time that it tells you isn't necessarily correct. I can live with that. So thanks so much for joining me today for this unboxing, setup, getting it connected to the computer, and my first little test cuts. On my next video using this, I am super excited to get the rotary tool in there and engrave on a tumbler. So I hope you have a great day and until my next video, bye-bye.